Palette to Palette with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from Sanderson Farms. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and from viewers like you. Thank you. So the coast is like a second home to me. I spent my summers down there as a kid. It was the perfect way to start day four of the Magical Mississippi Tour. You know, the coast for us was vacations and going to those little cottages by the piers and little crabbing and stuff, yeah. you know, and it was, it was, I remember being small, looking out the Gulf Coast and I swore I could see England, you know, from my vantage point down there. I thought it was, I thought it was as big as the world got the coast was. Do you remember the Friendship House? Oh, heck yeah. And Six Gun Junction? Yeah, they used to have like yeah, a, yeah. a dolphin you could ride like a horse, yeah. you know. So cool. We're starting another day. We're on the bus. We're waking up. We had a great breakfast. We had some great donuts. And we get on the bus and I realize what a great job you've done of putting this thing together, this package, this group of people. Well, you know, it's, it's teamwork. It's both of us. But what really makes it are the people. That's true. I mean, you can plan and do all the planning you want and you can put in all sorts of great places and good entertainment. It's all about the people. And so far, every trip we've done, We've had a great mix of people, and we usually do 25 when we go to Europe, but this was 40 people we were traveling with, and it was a great group of people. That's what made the trip. Mm -hmm. It helps to have a good mixologist <laughs> in the mix, too. You know, I expected uh, a lot of sleeping on the bus, and there was sleeping, usually maybe in the middle of the afternoon after we had our afternoon snack, uh, there was a little bit of sleeping going on. But uh, for the most part, because we had music playing uh, that related to the region we were in, people were looking out the window and they were kind of absorbing this whole magical Mississippi experience. So with your job, you wear a lot of different hats. This is, that is right? pretty much it. <laughs> Any of them, for sure. So y'all visit Mississippi Gulf Coast is here to greet uh, greet y'all. There are two really good museums on the coast. There's either or. Welcome to the Or O'Keefe Museum of Art. We're super excited to have you here. We're gonna have a tour of the property. How many of you have been to the Or before? We, we've done some things with the Or Museum before, so we've been down there. But but he's, he was not just a great artist. He was a great showman. He knew how to let get the word out about his, uh, his, his work. I mean, you know, you can't, you have this great indelible image of him with the mustache, and he has this paper thin pottery. Uh, but it was it, it was just a great great thing to be there again. Yeah. Well, we have ten buildings. Everything is unique and different, so we're gonna just have a good time and have a great tour. So thank you for being here. And uh, it's also the only Gary, I think, uh, in Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that Frank Gary building that had just been completed when Katrina hit. The the Grand Casino uh, barge floated into it all the way into there but uh, they were able to preserve it. And the people who run uh, the Oro Keith Museum are solid, yeah. great people. They've been good supporters of what we do. We love being uh, big supporters of what they do. I don't think there's another image that would better represent the spirit of George Orr. You see a man that is out of the ordinary, that is not afraid of breaking the rules, that is not afraid of exploring and experimenting. The different ways that he decided to break that box of uh, what ceramics is supposed to be uh, and kind of put his own uh, touch of imagination, of creativity, uh, and really break the limits in American pottery and in general all over the world. The pottery, man. How did he, how did he get that pottery so thin? I have no idea. <laughs> What, what, really what I liked about it also was the fact that that they had there, there was a workshop area where you could go and see how pottery's not everybody knows how pottery's made you know mm -hmm. you could go in there and see uh, pottery being thrown you could just uh, take okay. a tool like this 
and sort of like remove anything that you want it off. Oh, it just like that. Oh, okay. Just peel it. And then that's it. He's done. Yeah. Yeah, they have working artists who come in and do demos and, and, and uh, kind of artist in residence type situations. So as we're walking in, uh, there was a car and uh, it, it looked a little out of place. We couldn't quite <laughs> figure out. Uh, tell us the story here, Brenda. Uh, that is an old Mercedes that did not work and we donated it to the museum and we had 50 children here um, decorating the car, riding beautiful mementos. We had one little boy, he just lost his father, and he wrote Believe on the car, and he talked about, you know, that he what his artwork was representing what his father meant to him. And so we were, it just touched children in such a huge way because they camped out with their own little spot and made that spot on the car their own. You know, that's a so, great, well, it's a great idea, but the thing about it, there's something that, that it kind of is unified. It kind of yeah. kind of fits where yeah. even though there are a lot of separate parts, it's very Beatlesque. Actually, <laughs> you know, we're on the magical Mississippi tour, and the Beatles loaded everybody up on a bus yeah. that was painted uh, pretty uh, loudly right. like that to do the magical mystery tour. So, great idea. They're very involved with the community. They're plugged into the community, and. Um, it's, it's a super nice place. It's just a, a great environment to be in, the way they built around those trees, too. I thought that was great. Puts a good face on Mississippi. You know, we had eaten breakfast, we had driven to the coast, we had this Oro O'Keefe experience, and um, if you're gonna travel with me, you know what's next, and we're going to lunch. <laughs> and of all of the Mississippi characters, in the restaurant business in this state, at the top of the heap, the most dynamic uh, personality would certainly be Bobby Mahoney. Mary Mahoney's, you can see Bobby Mahoney, hear some jokes, eat some lunch. I love uh, the old line coast restaurants. How you doing, Bob Mahoney? Whenever you get to the Mississippi Gulf Coast, just come on down here to Mary Mahoney's. You know what they say? If you haven't been to Mary Mahoney's, you hadn't been to the Mississippi Gulf Coast. His mom started this place. She got it going good, paid for, and all I do is got to keep from screwing it up, right? <laughs> and thank God she was born before me, all I can tell you. Just the bomb right here. Come on here, W.W. Oh, wow. <laughs> what's that say? Yeah, oh, now that. Gosh. What's that say, W.W.? Uh, uh, you, you got me. I'm stumped. Huh? I'm stumped on that one. Art and pottery. What's that say? Oh, Watch you this. Why? Do you want me to knock you out? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. You know how Nike's got the swoosh? Yeah. Well, this ought to be their swoosh. That's way cool. What I love are those old line coast restaurants. The ones I grew up eating in when I was a kid, Barisev's, the Friendship House, all of those places, that's where my love of seafood started. I ate my first raw oyster at Barisev's. My grandfather took me, we ate, sat at the bar. Mary Mahoney's has been there the whole time. That is, that is the queen mother of all the old line coast restaurants. And I knew we had to have gumbo at Mary Mahoney's. I knew we needed to have some flounder. And, great. and I knew Bobby would put on a show, and he did. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, that guy. Bobby's had a long relationship with the Oro Keith Museum, and he knew the visual puzzle. What do you call that? I don't know, but it's, it's an optical thing. Yeah. yeah. They say, you see that? See what? That. What's that? I don't see that. I think most people thought that's what Bobby was going to do. He was going to talk about, you know, George Orr and this optical puzzle. I knew he was just getting started because <laughs> I know Bobby, and he was just getting started. How y'all all doing? Bob Mahoney here. Nice to have y'all there. What I do around here is I walk and I talk. Keep them working. Because <laughs> in the Russian business, as soon as you shut up, they're going to put you in the kitchen. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I'd rather be out here talking to uh, people. Now, where are you from, ma'am? Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg. You know what has four eyes and can't see? Mississippi. <laughs> and yes, ma'am, you know why the turtle crossed the street? Get to the shell station. <laughs> Five crows sitting on a bench and shot and kill one. How many you got left? I would say four. You think them crows gonna hang around and get shot? <laughs> My dog, you don't have any legs. You know what we call him? First fight. Sure. It don't matter. He ain't coming. <laughs> I said, 
joke. It's just a joke, okay? A joke. And how about you, sir? Bear and the bull coming right at you. You got one bullet. Which one would you shoot? The bear or the bull? Bear. Bear. That's right. You know why? You can always shoot the bull. <laughs> Boudreau and Clotilde went to the grocery store. Boudreau grabbed a 12 pack of that Budweiser. Clotilde said, put that beer back right now. Put the beer back. Boy, he's mad. He put the beer back. They go down a couple hours. She grabs a jar of facial cream. He said, what's that? She said, it's facial cream. He says, you put that back too. She said, but it makes my face look so beautiful. He says, so does the Budweiser. <laughs> You know, I've heard some of those jokes several times. I still laugh just as hard when I hear them. And part of the reason I laugh is because Bobby laughs at himself, and he's told them a thousand <laughs> times. He'll probably tell them a thousand more. Yeah, I hope so. Mr. Bobby's the greatest man God ever created. Working here, having this job is puts food on our tables, we get to talk to people. We're Mississippi and we're proud to be Mississippians and we're a hospitality state. So there you go. And right after the storm, here comes Anderson Cooper and John Grisham. So I go and introduce myself to Anderson. I said, you know, your daddy was here 30 years ago. I said, you or your brother was with him. He said, that was me. He was eight years old. His daddy was from Quitman, Mississippi. His daddy name was Wyatt Cooper. And, uh, well, my mother was ecstatic in 1976 that Wyatt Cooper was in the restaurant. Do you know who Wyatt Cooper's wife was? Gloria Vanderbilt. That's why I never did forget Gloria Vanderbilt's kid was in the house. <laughs> you know? Okay, so he wrote, a, he wrote a book, went to Robin Roberts. You know, Robin Roberts is from the coast. Uh -huh. And uh, so, uh, and, and talking about his book, Anderson brought up how his past caught up with him in Biloxi, Mississippi. Well, after they got through talking about that, Robin said, well, Anderson, did he tell you any of them corny jokes? <laughs> his mom was the grand dame of the coast restaurant been, business, yeah. and he's carrying on that tradition. So really no trip to the Mississippi Gulf Coast is complete without a meal at Mary Mahoney's because that is the mm -hmm. Mississippi Gulf Coast restaurant business in one building. Yeah. He had already endured Camille years ago, but it was nothing like uh, what what Katrina was, and the building's still standing, and Bobby wrote it out upstairs. The attitude of the coast people, they just, if something bad happens, well, we're just gonna rebuild. You, you know, know, that was it. That. And, and during Katrina, the attitude of Mississippians, it wasn't, you know, when somebody gonna do this for me, when somebody's gonna help me here. Mississippians just kind of hitched up their britches and got to work and they helped each other. They helped the neighbors. It's an amazing thing. Yeah, churches from all over pitched in and, and uh, the Mississippi Gulf Coast came back pretty quickly and better than ever. And so we leave Mary Mahoney's and we go to the Maritime Museum, which is really pretty interesting. I didn't know all the, the ways that shrimp is peeled and you know, the the different kinds of nautical things that they had on display there. But, you know, I, I go outside and I look around and I see there's a, there's a great anchor out there. And I think this will make a good painting. This will make a really good painting. And uh, But uh, Christy is my fiance and she was suggesting maybe something that, and she's kind of fair of complexion, redheaded. Maybe something in the shade would be better. So we went under the museum. We went under the museum and down there they have all these great boats stored. So I had a, uh, I had an opportunity to paint a wooden boat under, the, and it worked out pretty well because the posts that hold it up like, looked like piers, and it was a lot cooler. In the shade. And I will note that by the time this show airs, she will no longer be your fiance. She will be Mrs. Wyatt Waters. And she was in your wedding. She was, she was. She was in our wedding. And now I'm gonna be in your wedding. That's true, best man. <laughs> it's always interesting to me to see which subjects you choose to paint because you've got such a good eye and it's almost always never the one I would choose. I mean, that place is filled with boats. Three levels of different kinds of boats, speed boats, sailboats, shrimp and boats, everything. And you made the perfect choice of that boat. I love was, that painting. It was so simple. It just kind of screamed at you. You could see the view outside but you were underneath all this stuff in the shade. And it was just such a simple shape. And that's probably a big part of boat design, keeping a simple shape. Great painting. I don't know if I can do this or not, I'm gonna try.
and I push paint around a lot more than I used to now, just for effect, just because I enjoy, enjoy doing it. It's always fun to me to watch people who are watching you paint. And I've, you know, I've been around for 20 years watching you paint, and I get it, but so many times you can watch them and they're kind of like, eh, I don't know where he's headed. But by the time the painting's finished, it, uh, they get it and they're, oh, we love that. And it's that kind of thing. We had, I watched those people watch you do that painting. They were, they were really connected and real, very impressed, as was I. I. I think at the first, everybody kind of thinks, well, you know, okay, I've seen his paintings, maybe I like them, but oh, this one's just not gonna make it here. This one's not, okay, well, you know, but at the beginning, uh, uh, at the beginning, it's just the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, Whitewater. Thank you. <laughs> and that's how we do a painting in Biloxi of a museum with a boat underneath it. That group of people <laughs> were put together by the lovely Layla Esri, Thank who you, is Layla. also a producer on our show, but she also wrangles all the reservations. When, when we do our tours, these pallet to pallet tours we do in Italy and, and now here in Mississippi, she's the one that's uh, getting everybody together and do all that. And she did a lot of legwork on this thing. Yeah. And, it, and you gotta mention Terry Jordan. Oh, everybody got to meet Terry. Terry Jordan was the bartender. Terry and I have worked together for years. He was at the Purple Parrot for a decade and a half, probably. And uh, when we knew we wanted to set up a bar on the bus and get a bartender, I didn't think of anyone else. I called Terry yeah. up, he said, I'm in. And he had a blast and everybody fell in love with Terry. And that's always the situation. Everybody loves yes. Terry. That's they always one. have, they always will. I've known that guy for a long time and it was fun traveling with him. So today we're gonna cook a little chicken and andouille jambalaya. Good stuff, very Mississippi type thing. I use chicken thighs. My buddy Joe Sanderson and I, we were talking the other day, we're chicken thigh guys. Um, when I was younger, uh, I was a drumstick guy as a little kid, and then I probably went through about a 20 year phase in my life where I, uh, I was a breast man and, uh, and liked the white meat, but, but uh, probably the last 20 years or so, um, I'm a dark meat guy, and uh, it's the best. Uh, I'm gonna start with a little olive oil. This is uh, some good stuff from Tuscany. And we got some beautiful thigh meat right here. And uh, at the grocery store, you can buy thigh meat. You can get it um, bone in or boneless. This is boneless thigh meat, but um, you could do a very rustic version of uh, jambalaya and use uh, the bone in stuff if you want. So um, jambalaya is a little like uh, soup and the fact that you want to layer the flavors. And this is our first, this is some Creole seasoning that I'm gonna add. As we're cooking, you gotta season the meat. Let's see, we'll put a little salt in there too. And some pepper. So I wanna get this uh, chicken started, this thigh meat. It's gonna take about eight, 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna add the sausage. Creole season, whichever kind you like, whatever you prefer. I'm on about medium high heat right here. We're just gonna cook chicken. There's really no oil in the skillet. I, I put a little bit in there just to make sure the chicken didn't stick, but that's about all I need. Andouille sausage, this is beautiful stuff. Um, that's gonna render some fat as well. And that's part of the reason I don't want a lot of oil. You know it's gonna be good if you're starting anything with chicken and sausage. So I'm gonna let this cook for just about five or six minutes. So we're layering flavors. We're going with the, uh, the holy trinity of any kind of Louisiana cooking, and that is uh, onions, bell pepper, and celery. More onion than bell pepper and celery. The garlic tends to, to burn real easily and it'll get real bitter too. If you put it early in the process, uh, that happens a lot. This is about the point where I always like to add garlic. It's, it's, there's enough ingredients in there at this point that uh, it's not gonna burn. I'm gonna put a little more Creole seasoning in at this point too. So I'm gonna add a little Worcestershire, or as my grandmother called it, Worcester, hot sauce. 
man some tomatoes. These are canned tomatoes. I'm gonna put a little more hot sauce in this baby. Uh, we're at the stage the chicken is probably three quarters of the way done. Uh, sausage too. We've got some liquid in here and that's a good thing. And now I'm gonna add rice. A little stock. I probably made jambalaya pasta way before I ever made just legit real jambalaya. Bay leaves. Lee McCarty from Marigold, Mississippi used to put them in his uh, cocktails. Uh, I just put it in jambalaya. All right, so we've got jambalaya here. We have finished up chicken and andouille jambalaya. It's perfect one pot dish. That's it. We messed up a lot of the mise en place over here, but we made it in one pot, so we got one dish to wash. Perfect for company. This and a salad is all you need. Chicken thigh and andouille sausage jambalaya. It's good stuff. You know, the coast is a very, very diverse community mm -hmm. and your paintings throughout the years have really showcased that. And being from central Mississippi all your life, you really connect and do a great job when you're painting on the coast. It's a different place from where I grew up and it's really a special place. You said diverse and it really is. I mean, you're meeting the Vietnamese fishermen down there. You're meeting uh, the crab man who goes out and pulls in crab uh, nets. You get a chance to visit with artists. You, you meet all the locals when you're working outside. Mm -hmm. I saw this one guy who would drive up and down every day. I would see him and he was driving a, a Volkswagen a square back that had been lowered. And I wondered what he did because he would drive in the morning this way and would drive in the afternoon that way. I would see him every day. And what did he do? I have no idea. <laughs> he drives That's the end of that story? That's it. That's how that story ends? That was a setup. It was a great setup. I thought you know, it was just... It's just one of those moments, you know. But it happens like that on the coast. There are all these people and they're all coming and going. It's on the highway, where I, which is where the coast is. You see all that. It's just where all the people meet. You know? Yeah, yeah. The people on the coast are a different breed. And they're the best breed. Yeah. Because, I mean, I lived, I'm in Hattiesburg, I'm about 60 miles north, and, and I lived through uh, Camille, which was major, I mean, we had 110 mile an hour winds in, Hattiesburg, mm -hmm. in Hattiesburg, the coast was wiped out. And then Katrina, and Katrina was worse. The granddaddy <clears throat> mall. I can I was down there in July, right before Katrina, and I, I was with our mutual friend Ben and D. Rowe Puckett and their daughter Carol. They had a great big house in Past Christiane, and he showed me the room he wrote out Camille in on the second floor closet. And in this old house, it was a hundred year old house, after Katrina, there was nothing there but a slab. I was on the commission for renewal and rebuilding. The governor put together, and I was there a that few days inspiring. afterwards. I was there a few days afterwards, and it was, there's no word to describe. Well, the, the coast was not there. It was decimated. There was nothing. Slabs, just destruction. And the, the people are so resilient. They came back. Their attitudes were awesome. Everybody had, you want to talk about community in Mississippi? Mm -hmm. Community and people talk about Gulfport is Biloxi and the, you know, there's a little rivalry there, whatever. And in time of crisis, those people band together, they get together, and they rebuild. And that's what they've done. And the coast is better today than it was yeah. pre Katrina. And that's saying something. The coast is a really inspiring place because you take, like you said, all that tragedy. And the, the really, the, it's no mistake that there are so many art communities down there in mm -hmm. Bay St. Louis and Ocean Springs, like I was saying, because Artists, artists see the possibilities, but I think the people on the coast see the possibilities of when a tragedy happens as an opportunity to do things better or differently. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great place to paint because you meet people who understand that kind of spirit. That's right, and after Katrina, the artists were wiped out, their studios were wiped out, but the patrons were wiped out too. Yeah, I mean, true. it was all, the arts community was non-existent just like the restaurant community and every other business community and the tax base. And they have come back strong. Those people, man, you, you gotta love them. Mm -hmm. you gotta love the coast people, and I do. You know, I really think your art reflects that spirit 
of rebuilding, of renewal, of new birth, and it, it, I can see it in your work. Every time I'm down there, I feel like I'm on vacation, even though I'm working as hard as I can work. Yeah. It feels like I'm on a vacation, you know, you're on the coast. paintings seen on today's program are featured in the A Mississippi Palette Cookbook. This beautiful volume also includes Mississippi Heritage Recipes, A Mississippi Palette Cookbook. Palette to Palette with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from Sanderson Farms. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations. And from viewers like you. Thank you.